Cancer is an incredibly complicated disease. There's many, many aspects of it. And, and the reason it's so complicated is really because it's our own cells that stopped behaving themselves and are now taking on all these unique aspects. And so it's not like a bacterial infection where you can develop a drug to treat something that's not a part of you, right? So, so this drug can attack the bacteria very well, like antibiotics, for example, and not really do anything to us. Cancer, on the other hand, is a disease of ourselves. So if you try and develop a drug that will treat the cancer, um, one of the side effects are that you're going to be killing our normal cells as well. And so the trick has really been over the last decade or two to try and figure out what is that unique aspect that the cancer cells have that the normal cells in your body don't have. The thing that drew me to cancer biology is the fact that um, as a disease, uh, I feel scientifically it's something that if we can learn enough about it, we actually can cure cancer and that we can develop treatments that are much better than the current therapies that are available today where um, people are, are basically treated with these very toxic poisons to try and treat the cancer. My research sort of has two aspects. The first aspect is the basic science part of it, where we're still really trying to understand all the different things that are driving cancer. What has truly gone wrong in the cancer that makes it this terrible, deadly disease? The other aspect of my research involves developing drugs against those parts that we already do understand. So we've been able to develop uh, two distinct drugs targeting parts of cancer which we have found were important for um, breast cancer and now we're starting to determine that it's important for other cancers as well. So my research lab at the University of Arizona is really focused on the basic science, trying to learn as much as we can about the disease. Whereas our company, Arizona Cancer Therapeutics, is designed to take these drugs that we've developed through to clinical trials and see how well they can be used to treat patients. The major that advances that have really happened in the last 20 years have been our ability to dissect out very specific things that are happening in the cancer and uh, develop what we call molecularly targeted therapies. So these are therapies against uh, a single problem that's happened in a particular type of cancer so that you can develop a drug against that without without affecting the other, cancer, the other cells in your body. So there's two really great examples of molecularly targeted therapies that are already on the market and available to patients today. The first one is a drug called Herceptin, which was developed for a very particular subset of breast cancer. These cancer cells make one particular type of protein, and this drug attacks that protein. And if you're a patient with that subset of cancer, um, a fair amount of those patients respond very well to that drug. Another molecularly targeted therapy that has worked exceptionally well is for a type of leukemia called um, CML, where they have, a, again, a very specific mutation, and this drug is designed against that very specific mutation. So the hope is that we can find out exactly what's wrong with all the hundreds of subsets of cancer and develop molecularly targeted therapies for each of those cancer subtypes. In my lab, we've been looking at a subset of breast cancer called triple negative breast cancer. Um, it lacks a lot of the um, common drivers for cancer, and so uh, a lot of the basic research is trying to understand what is the driver that, that this type of cancer has. And so we've identified one of those drivers, and that's what one of our drugs is designed against. The way that we fund research in the United States is the federal government uh, will supply research grants to scientists. So when I first started my lab, I, I did that. I wrote a grant to the federal government, and they sent me back a response and said, well, you know, we really like your basic science, but your drug development part seems too risky because we don't know if it's going to work or not. Fortunately, uh, the ABRC was funding just those types of projects at the same time. So what I did was take that piece of research out of my federal grant and I submitted it to the ABRC and I said, you know, we have every reason to believe that this actually will turn into a great drug. We need the money to find out if it will. We need to be able to do the experiments and find out if it will. And ABRC funded it right away, which we were extremely excited about. And um, they've been funding us ever since. Triple negative breast cancer is one of the most aggressive and um, metastatic and difficult to treat of the breast cancers. 
we know that there's so many patients out there who are so truly desperate for a non-toxic drug that works against this disease. Patients who have triple negative breast cancer, unfortunately, there is no drug that they really respond well to. So um, the first line is standard chemotherapies, the sorts of um, toxic drugs that are very nonspecific, and they create the sort of side effects that, that most people are familiar with when they're thinking about cancer treatment. So you'll become very sick, um, your hair falls out, you know, you lose some uh, immune cells, you are very exhausted all the time, all these sorts of um, side effects that we associate with cancer chemotherapy. The stage that the work is in right now, we haven't gotten to the clinical trial, so there's no patients who have been treated with our drug yet. So there's there's still a fair amount of uh, regulatory sorts of experiments that have to be done before patients can be treated. We know that as soon as we get approval from the FDA to start our clinical trials, we're going to have a very large pool of patients who really want to try this because because really they have no other options. ABRC and the funds that have come from Arizona to fund our research here has been absolutely essential in getting this off the ground because um, a lot of the large federal granting institutions won't fund the type of research where, you know, it, it's high risk, high reward. They want to fund things that are much more guaranteed. And so having a, a institution like ABRC here in Arizona and the ab ability to have funds to explore these potential high reward research projects has been absolutely essential in, in being able to get it to the point where we're at today.